Welcome to today's podcast. I'm here at Crow Corner again with Nettles and today we're going to be talking about one of the very special things that has come into the Living Norfolk Magic collection and it is an oracle deck called the Witch's Guidance Oracle which was made by Ferlin the Fair a few years ago. Now it's hand drawn in pen and ink and uh, there are lots of different pictures of different kind of witchy items including crows, witch balls, puppets, spells uh, and the elements as well, cats um, and all sorts of other bits and pieces there. So it's a wonderful, wonderful oracle deck and what he did when he finished it, he wanted to make it look a little bit more uh, atmospheric and, and to make the cards look older, so he stained them with tea. And in fact, that has been absolutely fantastic. But unfortunately, Ferlin himself, when he did it, he didn't like the results. And he was really, really upset about it because he didn't think that it had come out uh, as well as if he just left them plain, which is in fact what he did with the uh, the, the Witch's Guidance Oracle uh, title card. He left that on the white card. Um, personally, I prefer the, the stained cards. I think they look absolutely wonderful. But uh, Ferlin packed the cards away into the box that he'd also painted and decorated especially for them. And he never used the cards very much because he didn't like them. Now, a few years ago, Ferlin was actually living at my house for a few months. And while he was there, because we have an open fire, he decided that it would be a great idea to get rid of the cards because he didn't like them. He didn't want them. And so he was going to burn them in our wood burning stove. Well, you can imagine I was absolutely horrified, so I snatched them away from him, and he was quite determined, so I had to hide them in the house, and they've remained hidden for quite a long time. And in fact, they were so well concealed that uh, I couldn't remember where I'd put them. But a few days ago, I found them, and I said to Nettles, do you think we should have these in the Living Norfolk Magic Collection? And she said, oh, yes, absolutely. So that's where they're going to be. They're absolutely safe. Uh, Ferlin has agreed, in fact, that we can have them and that we can talk about them on here. And he promises that he won't try to snatch them away and burn them. So we thought also we'd talk today a little bit about uh, some of the cards and some of the, the items on them and what they might mean in an oracle deck and, and what they mean to us and why we like the cards. Well, when I was thinking about which ones we should talk about, my first card that I picked out for Nettles to talk about was, of course, Raven, because I, I know how much she loves her ravens, crows, rooks, and, and all the Corvid family, in fact. So uh, was I right in picking that card for you, Nettles? Oh, you certainly was. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, these cards are absolutely fantastic, and it would have been such a shame to have got rid of them. They are truly magical. So the, the raven that I have in front of me is sitting on a branch with a moon. And you can see and it's, it's, it's simplicity, it, but it's so beautiful. And um, ravens and corvids are quite dear to my heart. And in fact, actually, I do have two crows that, uh, or rescue crows um, that I have in an aviary in my garden. Um, I mean, crows are so intelligent birds. And, you know, they can solve problems. So when you see ravens or crows on a card, it's about intelligence. It's about, you know, sort of being able to solve problems. To me, um, gosh, I mean, when I first, you know, uh, thought a crow was going to be uh, one of my magical animals or guides, 
It actually came to me first. I, I don't know whether anyone has seen um, Brandon Lee's The Crow. <laughs> oh, yes. And, uh, and of course, The Crow comes and they are like the gatekeepers to the other world, which is what they are. They are keepers of the knowledge. I mean, we have Odin and he's ravens who, who fly um, and, you know, thought and memory. So, and they are like, they're bringing back all the wisdom and knowledge. So, you know, to me, Raven is about wisdom, knowledge, gatekeepers of the other world. They, for me as well, when I want a question answered, I will quite often be thinking about something and quite often crows will uh, fly over or they will be there. I will hear a call. Um, so, yeah, they are very, very special to me. And uh, they are uh, one of the, the things that or birds that help me on my journey mm. um, and give me the answers to my questions. Mm. And, and I think uh, Ferlin has done a particularly good illustration of the crow there, hasn't he? It's, it's absolutely brilliant. I mean, it's it's holding um, like either a little ball or a berry or something in its mouth and um, could you know, and it's it's got a crescent moon on it. It's sitting on a branch. Um, so, you know, obviously, you know, it can be they pick, don't they, what they want, crows. Yes, they're very, absolutely. very, you know, sort of, uh, you know, they're, they're um, also obviously um, ravens or crows and any corvid, you know, clear up as well, don't they? Because, oh, yes. You know, uh, you know, they take up all the carry and stuff mm -hmm. on the road. So, you know, they have many, many, you know, sort of magical, uh, you know, uses and, and uh, tasks that they bring to yeah, magic. Yeah. And very practical birds Very, very, as very well. practical yes. birds, yes. In complete contrast, I rather like this card of the, the green lemon. It's actually the spell, the conjuration of the lemon and pins. Oh, yes, it is in Lane. You have one, don't I you? Do indeed, <laughs> yes. Um, the, the idea for doing this spell is from Leyland's Aradia, or Aradia, however you want to pronounce it. Um, and it specifies a green lemon. And what you do is you put pins into the lemon so that the whole lemon is covered and turns out uh, a little bit like a hedgehog. Um, and if you put all beautiful, bright coloured pins into it and give the lemon to somebody, uh, that's a spell for good fortune. If you mix in some black pins, there will be some bad fortune with the good. And of course, if you give somebody the lemon covered in black pins, then that would be to, um, to wish the person considerable ill, in fact. Now, it's interesting that it's, it's called the green lemon and um, that it, it does need to be a green lemon used for this particular spell. Now, some people do tend to think that a green lemon actually means a lime. Mm. But this isn't, in fact, the case, because what it means is um, it, it, it means an unripe lemon. And the reason for that is that if the lemon is unripe when you make the spell, uh, it, is, it preserves much better. Now, the one that you mentioned that I made quite a few mm. years ago, I mean, that dried up beautifully. But I was really fortunate in being able to get a green lemon, an unripe lemon, uh, from Cyprus because um, our friend Matthew was living in Cyprus at the time and, and he actually got, uh, got the lemon for me. Uh, it's not that easy to get them here. You have to keep asking green grocers if they've got any green lemons. And, you know, sometimes they, they do have one uh, in, a, in a large box that might not be properly ripe. But uh, this, this is a lovely card. So I would say that, that the meaning here is that, uh, that you're going to get you know, some bad things and some good things because Ferlin has drawn this with a, an equal mix, actually, he of has, dark yes. and light pins. Um, you know, so, so, it's, so it's not all good, but it's not all bad either. 
Um, whether that suggests that it's somebody wishing you that or it's just a matter of fate. Um, That's right, because you've got the dice cup on there, haven't you? You've got the rune of the dice cup. So, you know, again, you know, uh, what will your fate be? You, yeah. you know, you can you throw the dice. I mean, mm. what, what fate will you have? Yes, exactly. And if you look really closely at the dice in the corner there, you can see that on the top of it is it's actually the Gifu rune. It has isn't got it? a Gifu rune on. Yes, it has. Yes. What do you yeah. think the rune is on that? Do you think that's Largu's or is it is it um, is it Iwas? Do you think it's hard oh, to say, isn't it? It is. I, it, possibly Iwas. I think. Um, yeah. Yes, it's hard because it's disappearing it, into it the. It is, but it's isn't it. Again, it's a bit, a little bit of the mystery, isn't it? Oh yes, yes, and and of course, you know, there are no set interpretations for these cards, and and very often you you would interpret them differently depending on on what you were asking and um, what came through to you at the time of doing the divination. That's right. I mean, you know, th things do change, don't they? And, and we see different things in the cards at different times. Absolutely. You know, every time we pick up a card or, you know, from whatever deck it is, you see something, you know, different, um, whether it be, you know, because of your question or maybe the answer is actually revealing itself to you from the card. So how would you interpret the different pins in the cards? You know, what's actually the picture on the card and what stands out at the time? Mm, absolutely. What, what do you think about the altar card? You're the expert on <laughs> making altars, aren't you? I mean, your altars are always fantastic. So what do you think well, about this one? I love the altar. So, I mean, the altar for me is an expression um, and a gift to the gods about what you're doing. So an altar can be anything. It can be on the ground. It can be on a table. You know, I mean, there are many, many altars. Um, but actually what we put on them, I mean, varies between, uh, you know, different traditions. Um, you know, some people would say you have to have a knife or an athame on here. You have to have a cup. You have to have candles, you know. Um, and and some would say that, you know, uh, maybe, you know, if you're on the Wiccan path, you you may well have these. We don't always have um, an athame on, on an altar. But, you know, the altars that I prepare, you know, are inspired at that time. So, you know, that's the that's the bit I love about um creating this magic, this because it's about building the magic when you're creating the altar. So, you know, I'm an idea might come um depending on what ritual, what Sabbath that you're doing, and and then you will build that magic up on the altar. And it is like for me, like a gift to the gods. Mm. And you know, uh, it's about respect. It's about honouring. Um, you know, the altar is is more than just something look, that looks pretty. Or you know, it you know for me it has a meaning in the work that goes into setting an altar. I think is uh, you know quite important Absolutely. for me. Yes, and of course people can see one of your altars on the Living Norfolk Magic page because the one you made for the um, Autumn Equinox this year is actually featured on it that is, page, yes. isn't it? Yes, yes. But this one's a really simple altar, in fact, isn't it? With a deer skull in the centre and two uh, two candles either side of it. Yeah. Uh, just a, a, a feather, an, an athame, a, a cup and, um, and a little dish in front of it. That's right. Yeah, so I mean, you know, uh, some people like to have um, representations of the elements on their altar. You know, if you weren't going to be uh, maybe casting a circle, but you wanted to have all the elements on, on your altar, that's okay too. So, you know, you've got a feather, maybe the element of air, but a feather could mean, you know, lots of different um, things like inspiration or, you know, it could represent, you know, your breath or speaking. I mean, you know, all these things, whatever you put on an altar will be personal to you at that time. Absolutely. And of course, sometimes people do put a witch bottle on an altar as well, don't they? And and Ferlin has actually done a witch bottle card here, which is rather lovely. Um, he has, it's, yes. it's partly traditional, but it's got some extra things in it as well, hasn't it? Because it's um, it's got what looks like to be a nail and it's got various pins in it. Um, 
but it's also got some leaves as well. That's right. Um, yeah, and uh, and and he's depicted it as having a cork with wax over the top, which is rather lovely because I happen to know that that's how he normally makes his rituals. He does. Yes, we've had some in the past, haven't we? Uh, you know, and we've worked together. And we've made witch bottles and they've been sealed with, with wax. And he's made them for all sorts of different things, hasn't he? Um, if there are protective ones. Yes. There yeah. are ones to attract money and love and, and various things that, that he's done. And, and one of the things that I particularly love about them, which you don't see once they're completed, is that he always gets a pin with a glass head and puts mm. it through the cork in the top of the bottle before he pours the wax over it which I think is a lovely idea and obviously he chooses the colour of the pin according to the kind of spell that he's working but uh, he is indeed a very creative worker of spells isn't he, he certainly is yes and we've actually made a few witch bottles ourselves we've actually done uh, witch bottles for the elements when we've been working with the elements um, and uh, obviously there's been, you know, you can use uh, witch bottles, they can be spirit bottles, can't they? So, Indeed. you know, there are many, many um, ways in which you can use bottles in magic. Um, yeah, so... Looking at that one, though, I, I, I think this particular card is, is probably about protection, isn't it? It is. Because it, it, it most looks definitely. like that kind of witch bottle. It certainly it? does. This is definitely a protection <laughs> witch bottle, <laughs> yeah, so with the pins and the leaves. <laughs> and <laughs> Whether you should actually put it in the fire or not, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm never fond of that idea of putting them in the fire. I prefer the idea of burying them outside yes. the house, in fact. Because, you know, I, I think the explosive nature of them when you burn them is... Um, it's a, bit, it's a bit worrying sometimes, isn't it? Yes, I wouldn't want one put one in the fire. I mean, I think no. burying for me <laughs> would be the way forward. <laughs> Much the safer option. Mm. And of course, uh, you know, another one that um, that he's done here is is the poppet, which is rather lovely, and that's another one with pins in it. It so certainly is, and he's got the feathers on there too, hasn't he? Yes. Actually, the, the poppet reminds me slightly, although it's it, you can see its material reminds me of the, like the straw man, you know. <laughs> sort of. It's funny you should say that because when I first looked at that, I thought, oh, he's done a poppet made of straw, and then I realised, no, no, it's not straw. It's just that the ends of the material for the limbs are very, very ragged. Ragged, yes. yeah. But uh, but but it is sort of it's almost halfway between a straw one and a fabric. It one, is, isn't yes, it? yes. Oh, I think it's wonderful. So, you, you know, you've got, um, you know, the three, well, there's three pins on this, whether that's got any significance or <laughs> not, who knows? Um, but, uh, yeah, it's absolutely beautiful. Again, like I say that poppets can be used for many different, uh, you know, types of magic. They can be used for protection, can't they? Can, mm. They can be uh, used for obviously doing harm. Um, depends on whether you've got your dark side flowing and going on. <laughs> I, I rather, I rather think Ferlin might have had his dark side flying when he depicted this. I his think mom. he might have done. Yes, yes I, I, I don't think this is a healing. It's not by any means. It, it isn't. No, no. <laughs> I, I quite like the glass cane as well. That's a lovely one, oh, isn't it? Oh, that's wonderful. I mean, you know, some of the Victorian glass canes now you can pay a lot of money for. Um, and I know, uh, well, you've got a lovely glass cane, haven't you? Um, you know, an old one. But but one of the ones that, um, that we both have is one that uh, we went to a place called Langham Glass in Fakenham. And uh, so they are handmade and local. And we actually commissioned, didn't we? We did. Them didn't to we? make yes. us a glass walking stick each. They're very, they're very, very special because we were able to choose our colours and the exact height we wanted them so that uh, so that they, they are the height to fit us if they were a walking stick. They are, they? yeah. So they, they have a practical use. Uh, you know, as well if if we need it in the future <laughs> as we get older. But no, <laughs> but no, they are very, very beautiful items. And, and obviously um, there is an element of protection as well when um, you hang a glass walking stick at your door. Um, so, and also I think one of the things, I mean, when we got these, um, we... 
dedicated them, didn't we, we when, did, we, yes. when we got them. Um, we did a, a lovely little ritual um, to dedicate the, the for the use of them. And, and also, I mean, you know, you can use them for casting circles. Um, you know, they are they are just a, a wonderful item to have in your magical collection. And, and especially um, if you can uh, go and uh, and pick one, have one handmade yourself. I mean, the day actually uh, started out, we were going on. It was one of the one of our little tripettes, as we call them. And it was one of the on our bucket list of one of the things that we were going to do was go to Langham Glass. And we wanted to do some some glass blowing. Yes, because they actually let you have a go there. They did. They? And we did. We paid to have, uh, you know, a go um, glass blowing. And then we saw these two um, walking stick canes. And they had them in, I think it was blue and white and red and white and they, they had them on the wall well of course our eyes were immediately <laughs> went to these walking canes and went oh, will you make us one can you can we order one and they did and they made them for yes us. and it was uh one of their glass blows whose name was carl if i remember That's right, correctly yes, yes. And he, he came out and talked to us about exactly what we wanted. And it's uh, it's so exciting to have one made this way. It is. And, and because, you know, again, it's, you know, a lot of our stuff in the, in the Living Norfolk Magic Project is is stuff that's local to us. So the things that, that we're having in the collection are things that either have a connection to Norfolk or what we're working with. Or, you know, like the surrounding areas, you know, outside of Norwich Fakenham is one where Langham Glass is. And, you know, we want to support and, you know, um, the local communities, but also bring it, you know, is it is about bringing alive that magic in, in, in our surrounding or in our area and all the surrounding little villages, because we have some absolutely wonderful mm. villages and things. You know, and that we can support our local trade. It's lovely people. to be able to do that, isn't mm. it? And what was interesting about our choice of timing for getting these glass canes was that one of the very significant traditions, particularly in our East Anglia, of using the glass cane is that you hang it up by the door and it absorbs infection and you mm. should clean it with a soft cloth on a regular basis mm. to keep you safe from infection. Mm. And, and in fact, this outing was just before the whole covid thing began it was, and, wasn't it? Uh, yes. so there was a there was a very interesting kind of topical and magical relevance to getting them and uh, mind you of course ferlin uh, depicted that walking stick on on the card long before uh, long before covid and long before we had actually got our walking That's sticks right. ourselves and he's he himself, I know, has a, a Victorian one, mm. and I'm, I'm sure at some point he would like to get one from from Langham as well. Oh, one of the little things we did as well, didn't we? Because um, they have the the little candy cane walking sticks as well. So we we actually bought several of those too as gifts for yes, people, didn't we, we? Didn't we? They make love. They make lovely little gifts, don't they? Um, and uh, and of course, if you go after Christmas, because they're really meant for Christmas trees, <laughs> you can you can normally pick up some in the sale. That's right. Yes. In fact, actually, funnily enough, I was looking on the website <laughs> uh, yesterday, I think, and uh, I thought, oh, well, uh, we could do with a few more of them. <laughs> <laughs> well, perhaps we're going off to do some more shopping before long. So uh, so so um, there are plenty more cards that we could talk about, but. Um, Let's leave that for today. And well, we can post some more, can't we, we on can the Live in Norfolk pictures, Magic, yeah. so you can have a look at these absolutely beautiful cards. There is um, one post on there at the moment with a couple of pictures on, um, on the Live in Norfolk Magic page, but perhaps we'll pop a few more on there because they are so beautiful. And, you know, when someone makes something and they put the effort into it, I mean, I think it's probably like for Ferlin. 
it's like anything sometimes we do we're never happy with what we do or we you know it's never good enough you know but actually they are absolutely wonderful yeah they 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 they're outstanding and unique and what i love about them is that they will never be printed so so this will only this will always be the only one and uh, and and in a way we were fortunate that uh, that Ferlin decided he didn't, didn't like it. So <laughs> that now we have, yeah. So now we have it in the collection, and we're very grateful to Ferlin for making them and for for saying that uh, it, we could talk about them and we could have them in the collection. So that's lovely. So thank you very much, and we'll see you soon. See you soon. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>